today we are very um, today we are very fortunate to have His Grace, His Holiness, Chandra Moli Swami Maharaj, who who has joined us already. Um, um, Maharaj is going to continue to enlighten us from the um, Srimad Bhagavatam, and today we are going to do Canto Five, Chapter Fourteen, Verse Number Eighteen. Um, Hare Krishna Maharaj, please accept my humble obeisances. All glories to Srila Prabhupada and all our Guru Maharajas. Whenever you are ready, Maharaj, you may take the call over. Thank you so much for your association. Hare Krishna. My obeisance is to everyone. Srimad Bhagavatam, cap chapter 14 of Canto 5, verse number 18, Forest of Enjoyment. Kachid Grahasram Karmakananadi Kodanadi Bhargirim Aruruk Shamano Loka Vyasa Karsitit Mana Kantaka Sarkara Shetram Vishyan Eva Siddhati. Translation In householder life, one is ordered to execute many yagyas, activities, especially the Vivaha Yagya, the marriage ceremony for sons and daughters and the sacred thread ceremony. These are all duties of a grihasta, and they are very extensive and troublesome to execute. They compared to a big hill over which one must cross when one is attached to material activities. A person desiring to cross over these ritualistic ceremonies certainly feels pains like the piercing of thorns and pebbles endured by one attempting to climb a hill. Thus, the conditioned soul suffers unlimitedly. Hmm. Shiva Prabhupada's purport. There are many social functions for keeping a prestigious position in society. In different countries and societies, there are various festivals and rituals. In India, the father is supposed to get his children married. When he does so, his responsibility to the family is complete. Arranging marriages is very difficult, especially in these days. At the present moment, no one can perform the proper ritual of sacrifice, nor can anyone afford to pay for the marriage ceremony of sons and daughters. Therefore, householders are very much distressed when they are confronted by these social duties. It is as though they were pierced by thorns and hurt by pebbles. Material attachment is so strong that despite the suffering, one cannot give it up. Prahlad Maharaj therefore recommends in Srimad Bhagavatam 755, The so-called comfortable family position is compared to a dark well in the field. If one falls in a dark well covered by grass, his life is lost despite his cry for rescue. Highly advanced spiritualists therefore recommend that one should not enter the Grihastha ashram. It is that better to prepare oneself in the Brahmacharya ashram for austerities and remain a pure Brahmachari throughout one's life. And that one will not feel, so that one will not feel the piercing thrones of material life in the Grihastha ashram. In the Gihasta Ashram, one has to accept invitation from friends and relatives and perform ritualistic activities. By doing so, one becomes captivated by such things, although he may not have sufficient resources to continue them. To maintain the Grihasta lifestyle, one has to work very hard to acquire money. Thus, one is implicated in material life 
and he suffers the thorn pricks. Om Gyan Timirandas Yad Gena Jana Salakaya Chaksun Melitam Yena Tas My Shri Gadavina Maha Nama Om Vishnu Padaya Krishna Prasthaya Bhutale Shri Makti Bhakti Vedanta Swamini Tivane Namaste Saraswati Deve Gauravani Pacharine Near Visesa Sunyavari, Pasyat Yede Sitarine, Panchakopa, Taru Vischa, Kripa Sindhu, Pay Vicha, Patitanam, Father Nebio, Vaishnavi, Yonamaha, Jai Sri Krishna, Chaitanya Prabhu Nityananda, Sri Advaita Gadadhar, Sri Vasa Vigor, Bhaktarinda, Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare. Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare. Hmm. He, to perform yagas and fruit of, fruit of activities, especially marriage ceremonies for sons and daughters, along with the <clears throat> Upanaya Samskara, all of these are required in household life. <clears throat> and here they're compared to the piercing of thorns and pebbles, such large amounts of resources, arrangements, and various types of uh, decorations, we might also say, are entered into in order to make the ceremony what they consider to be grand or successful. And this is very, uh, common, and people take it as ordinary, but here we get a little deeper understanding. <clears throat> it takes a lot of time, energy, resources. And it also takes ones away from the practice of spiritual life. Uh, so, Grihasta Ashram means family or wife. There's no such thing as Grihasta without a wife, a person who is living outside of the temple and is not married and wears white, may go to work is not a grihasta. Grihasta means a wife. <laughs> and then again, there are sometimes and many times, most of the times there are children. Hmm. So maintaining these things or can be a great burden and taking away from uh, the direct activities of devotional service. Hmm. So what does that mean that we give up grihas to life? It doesn't say that here. It says that one should be one should somehow or other try to become Krishna conscious during all of these, which makes it a little bit difficult. The word brahmacharya means light. It's another synon synonym for brahmacharya. It means if you're going on a journey and you have to cross a, or we say, steep and hilly terrain, and we might compare that to the struggle of living in the material world. It's, it's described in this chapter in so many different analogies. Then um, the less you have to carry on the trip, the easier it is to make the trip. Those of us who travel around and preach Krishna consciousness, we have to go from city to city in cars and in airplanes, sometimes in other conveyances. And we try to minimize the amount of things we carry because that makes the journey difficult. So in the same way, it says that if you're going on the journey of going back home, back to Godhead, the lighter you travel, the easier it becomes, or the more direct it becomes. Or you might also say, the more time you have for the actual goal of life. So sometimes it's said that Grihasta life is, causes one to divert one's attention away from the activities of devotional service and make so many arrangements for marriage, for raising children, 
for educating children, for marrying children, for dealing with the problems of family life, which are many, especially in society. So I know many of you out there are listening and you're, many of you are in Grihasta life and you have families. So how do we take this particular verse? Do we give up our family? Do we go to Vrindavan and sit there and just chant Hare Krishna? That's not recommended either, but it's just giving a little insight of the responsibilities that sometimes become, many times become, what we say, the piercing thorns and pricking pebbles in the attempt to climb the hill of bhakti. And so what do we do? We have to become serious in our execution of devotional service. Although we have so many other responsibilities, a lot of the of course, we can min minimize these responsibilities. Just like if you want to marry your sons and daughters, you can have a very simple wedding or you can have a very grand wedding. Uh, recent, not so recent, maybe in the last five years, I was in one place and I was at one temple and I met this very quite aristocratic and very well-to-do a uh, lady, she was just coming into devotional service. And she was quite wealthy. So when she was, we were talking and she was telling us about, she just got her daughter married. And it cost four million pounds for the marriage. Now that's about, that's about five million dollars. And I said, how is that? How much, how could you spend so much? Well, she said, we had to invite the relatives from all over the world and pay for their plane tickets. And then of course the marriage itself. So they spent 4 million pounds just on a wedding. <laughs> I was thinking, I'm sure there could be a better use for that money. <laughs> so sometimes we see that and those who don't have resources sometimes struggle in order to take care of the responsibilities house of household life and have to work extra save sometimes borrow money get in debt with various types of interest rates adjust to perform a lot of the duties that are there in household life but amongst all of this one has well so what is the solution well uh, the solution actually is, it's a very easy solution to explain, but maybe a little bit difficult to do. And this is Srila Prabhupada's vision for the ISKCON society, is develop community where many families live together on a plot of land, each having their own houses, a temple in the middle of the land somewhere, and everyone knows each other, associates with each other, works together to develop the community, and supports each other in all of these various, what we say, grihasta duties. That minimizes the uh, work and effort and finances, because they say when, you know, many hands make light work. And of course, the resources are not as needed as much. So Prabhupada wanted us to develop a more simple lifestyle in a community environment, particularly and especially for those in married life. Because he said these cities won't last. He said these cities will crumble. They will actually become uh, what we say places of simply economic development and crime. And we're seeing that right now. And then, of course, there'll be so much dependent on the cities. So Prabhupada's vision, and he spoke about it many times in many lectures, and he emphasized it, you know, develop these simple, more rural communities where devotees can live more naturally 
uh, get everything they need from the land. Also, maybe bring in cows, milk cows, protect cows, um, and uh, use cows to help develop an economic base. Because if you have land and cows, you can develop agriculture. And these, it takes a little effort to get it going. And once it gets going, if everyone works together, we see there are many communities like that that are not Krishna consciousness, just like we have the Amish community. I think many, many of us are living somewhere near them in places like Ohio and in Pennsylvania particularly, where they are a very highly religious group. Of course, they also have their problems, but they live in community and therefore they share each other's uh, workload and work together to uh, produce farmland, houses, and uh, support each other in various ways. This is a practical material solution. And it's also the way to live. Um, if you have to go to work to make money to buy food, then why not grow your own food? And then you don't have to spend so much time working just to get the money to buy the food, which is a big effort in itself to get the money, to use the money to buy the food. And sometimes you don't get food that is of quality. So Prabhupada wanted us as a society to put a more emphasis on developing self-sufficiency and communal living, not only from the spiritual perspective, the spiritual perspective is that when more people are together performing devotional service, we give support to each other. We also work together in our spiritual activities. But it's very foundational to help develop a lifestyle which is more simpler and easier, just like in Vedic lifestyle. People living in that type of environment would only work four months a year. In those four months of year, they would, you know, um, uh, plant agriculture, crops, and various uh, arrangements are made. And then after some time, the crop is harvest, and then you can live on that for the entire year. You don't have to go out and spend money or work simply to get your food. And food produced by our own devotees is much more nutritious in the sense that it's much more healthy, more natural. And the activity of growing food becomes a, a, a spiritual activity from the very beginning when the ground is cultivated, the seed is planted and the uh, plant is growing, the cultivation of the plant and then the harvesting and then the then the uh, preparing, then the cooking, and then the eating, the whole thing is bhakti from the very beginning. So um, this type of lifestyle is, of course, very synonymous with or in line with how Krishna lived. And that's the more simple and easier lifestyle. The, the, the difficulty is that devotees are not conditioned to work like that. We have to have our... <laughs> We have to push our buttons to get everything we need, and then we consider that to be a luxury. We have our big houses with our big giant garages and, and oversized beds, uh, which is all what we say unnecessary, a lot of time and effort. So um, this particular uh, verse is teaching us that you, there is a lot of responsibilities, and these responsibilities are required for those in Grihasta life, and they cause a lot of difficulty and cause one to work hard in order to uh, produce these activities and to get the benefit from it. But community makes everything more, what we say, natural, easy. You share labor, you share resources, and you have association with devotees. Uh, Srila Prabhupada said, 50% of my, uh, my mission is still incomplete. The second half, we call it. And that is developing simple rural communities 
especially for grihastas, for the sannyasis and for the brahmacharis, they can live and preach in the cities and travel. And then they can also come to the farms from time to time and spend time there. But grihastas should, who, who have to work hard, maintain children, maintain the griha in itself, this more natural lifestyle is, in, it makes Krishna consciousness practice much more easy, simple, and joyful. Of course, we have some of our communities. We have our Gita Nagari community, which is developing, New Vrindavan community, which is also moving slowly in that direction, not fast enough. Um, there's other communities around the world. We have our Govardhan Echo Village, which is way ahead of everyone in developing everything, spiritual and material. And we also have our hung Hungarian farm in, uh, in Hungary, where devotees are developing agriculture and build their own houses like that. More than 150 devotees live within the community. So due to our conditioned nature, we think this is too much of a change. Uh, how do we do it? There is blueprints, there's ideas. So my, uh, my uh, encouragement is to uh, make life more easy, both material and spiritual and more natural. And of course, we, get it, we can get away from, so Srila Prabhupada's program was to develop not only Krishna consciousness, but a society of devotees, which is not dependent on the external world for all the needs that are required. And to have a community where we chant together, dance together, go to Mangalarti together, um, and share resources like that. This is Krishna consciousness. It's ideal. We're far from the ideal. Right now we live in our little houses and we go to work and the kids go to school. They come back with all bad habits after associating with the materialistic kids. I was just with one of my disciples. He has a young kid and he goes to school. And now he's learning all bad language and his, uh, his friends text him with bad language. His mother's becoming really upset. So he's a nice boy, he grows up in a very, you know, Vedic family, and now he's being uh, subjected to so many things. So Srila Prabhupada's idea also was to create either homeschooling or schools for our young children. Of course, when they grow up, they can go to universities. But from the early years, from the first 12 grades, uh, we can create our own schools and educate kids in Krishna consciousness along with the required materialistic subject matters. So this is the vision that Srila Prabhupada had in which he very strongly emphasized in his lectures and in his books. And we might say due to the social climate that we have now, um, the materialistic society as it is, is becoming very fragile. And there are so many difficulties and it's only increasing, especially taxes, more and more taxes. Prabhupada explains, and actually it's not Prabhupada, it's Srimad Bhagavatam. It says that people will be taxed so much by the governments that they will leave their homes and go to the forest just to avoid all the harassment by governments. Yeah. Taxes, taxes, more taxes, this tax, that tax, more taxes. So, yeah, we live in a very dysfunctional environment in these cities. But if we can somehow create these communities and develop them, and we have them already going in certain areas, then devotees can deal with all the responsibilities of Grihasta life in a more natural and a more easy way. I use that word easy also, because there is so much support for within the community like that. And so otherwise, as it says here, the Grihastas, they have to 
struggle, 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 just to maintain a Grihastha life. I see that so many times that sometimes because of family responsibilities or social responsibilities, when there are programs within the community for Krishna consciousness, a lot of times it interferes with their social and family responsibilities and they, they opt to not to go to the programs or to the festivals or to the, uh, to the celebrations in order to take care of Grihastha duties, which are endless. <laughs> they are endless. So um, I sort of moved away from the essence of this particular verse to explain there is a different lifestyle which is more natural and more conducive to both material development and Krishna consciousness. And that is Srila Prabhupada's plan for the future. Um, I don't think it's any more the future. I think it is something that has now become the present. And that uh, a more simplified lifestyle is required. The economic conditions of the world are quite fragile. And there is also much uh, predictions on the horizon of economic collapse around the world. So, um, but if you have land, you have equity. If you have cows, you have economic development. If you have uh, community, you have everything you need for your social and family responsibilities. And if you have Krishna, <laughs> which is ultimately the goal, then everything becomes nice. Okay, so we'll stop here and see if there's any comments or questions. Um, you can expand your questions in different areas. Hare Krishna Maharaj, a wonderful session, a very eye-opening eye session. Um, as you said, we all are grahastas and um, yes, we all are mothers. And um, I could totally relate to the, to the devotee that was saying that the kid would go to school and would come back ill-mannered and not speaking the very best things. And thank you so much for pointing us to the right direction. Thank you very much, Maharaj. Examples of numerous. <laughs> yeah. well, well, but, uh, I would request to devotees, if you have questions, please go ahead and take uh, Maharaja's association right now and go ahead and don't hesitate to ask. Hare Krishna Guru Maharaj. Uh, Rajamandala. Rajamandala? Yes, Guru Maharaj. Please accept my humble obeisances. Oh, Prabhupada, oh, 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 Graj Mandala from the UK. My obeisances. Hare Krishna. Jai Ho. Hare Krishna. Nice yes, I just wanted to add, actually, uh, similar to what Mataji said, that um, I remember growing up as a child in Krishna consciousness and uh, experiencing the same type of uh, experiences when it came to association with bad association when I was growing up. And um, it, it, it actually really affected me. But one thing I, I had was a, a very strong foundation, a very strong Krishna consciousness foundation. And uh, although I went astray a little bit when I was in my youth due to just bad association, uh, the foundation of Krishna consciousness was so strong that I came full circle. I, I came to a certain age where I realized and um, I just came back to Krishna consciousness and came back to realizing uh, myself and my, my journey and my path. And uh, it was a very interesting point you made and it just resonated with me as that young child is experiencing with uh, you know, with her mother and, and his, his own experiences in school, I kind of went through that and came out on the other end. It's very interesting. 
Yeah, yeah. I, um, I, I know your situation and you have a very strong Krishna conscious family. And that was the, you know, the foundation to, you know, to re, not redirect, but to come back to Krishna consciousness. Yes, uh, definitely agree. So uh, anyone experiencing that, our foundation needs to be such uh, and so, so strong that, uh, uh, that children will go astray, but um, if our foundation is very, very strong, then they will naturally come back uh, to where they should be. Yeah, that's the word for the family members to not only make themselves strong, but make their children also. Give them everything they can to practice Krishna consciousness properly. Thank you, Guru Maharaj. I just wanted to share that. Thank you, Raja Mandala. It was a really uh, enlightening point. Personal examples are the best form of education or uh, information. Thank you very much. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna Maharaj. Please accept my humble obeisances. All glories to Srila Prabhupada. Thank you so much. As much as you said, it was a very sobering class and it's so good to hear it. Um, and yes, I also agree with Prabhuji about having a strong foundation. Although um, I came to Krishna consciousness later in life, I did homeschool my children and um, I definitely, and then my, one of them went to school and I definitely can relate to them having that strong foundation. Fortunately, they usually come back to that. Um, my question, or I guess, yeah, my question is about kind of how do we, if we're living a householder lifestyle, how can we start to, um, I guess what are kind of the steps of kind of detaching ourselves from that grahasta lifestyle? I mean, I have started to very much so started to pull away from social activities in the material world and all of that. But um, I'm looking more toward, um, I would love to find a community to live in. I would love to, um, I've been making my life much more simple and, um, yeah, I just, I guess I'm just looking for guidance or encouragement in that. Sounds like, and, sounds like you're going in the right direction. It's not such, not that we can simply extricate ourselves from our present lifestyle and jump into a, a new one. Take some planning and it usually happens gradually. But once you get to a certain level, then you start to see the benefit. And then you start moving more in that direction. So continue the way you're going and just hear more about the benefits of this lifestyle. Um, I gave four lectures in the year 2020 and three in the year 2021, both in May, on just this whole idea of simple living, which are available. Um, and they're based on Srila Prabhupada's instructions. And along with the verses from the Bhagavatam spoken by Srila Prabhupada in his purports. Um, and there's many, many things that are available out there. Um, there is books. Um, of course, um, to get a little bit of an insight of the benefits of that type of lifestyle and the transition that is needed in order to make that, to, to make it to that, to ultimately come to that lifestyle. But the, I think the best thing and the easiest and most educational thing is to go visit some of these communities, spend some time there and get a little feel of what it's like to live there. And then associate with the devotees and, you know, discuss you know, some of your questions and ideas there. I think 
And just to move to some place without experimenting prior is, I think, is a little bit risky. Best thing is just to go and spend some time, spend maybe a, maybe a month or maybe a couple months just to get a feel and learn more about it, learn the benefits, learn the, what are some of the struggles. And that will help a lot. <laughs> Uh, in Srimad Bhagavatam, first canto, 10th chapter, verses 4, 5, and 6 are very powerful verses that align ourselves with these particular topics, along with first canto, 8th chapter, verses 39 and 40. Um, Krishna has put everything we need in nature. You know, we live in a society where the uh, corporations and the plan makers, they simply extract everything out of nature and sell it back to you. But it's already there. You just have to use it. <laughs> All medicine is in nature. You can cure anything, anything from herbs. And you know the science. All the food is in nature. Everything is provided between the cow and the land. Everything is there. Grains, milk products, vegetables, fruits, everything is there. Legumes, spices, everything is provided by God. And uh, uh, even valuable gems are produced by the Lord through the climatic changes that come about. So there's a lot, we somehow, what we do now is we, we live outside of nature and exploit nature for what we need. Better to live in harmony with nature and then nature provides everything you need nicely. And that takes, like, like I suggested, try it as an experiment. That one maybe might, might be your next step. Just choose a community that you might think will be interesting, get some advice from others, and go and try it for a little while. Thank you, Maharaj. I truly appreciate that. I really, um, like I said, I'm, I'm moving toward, you know, making things simpler for myself and, and finding a community, and I really appreciate your guidance in that. Thank you so much. Hare Krishna. Yeah. Thank you. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna, Maharaj Dhanvit Pranam. Um, Maharaj, uh, you brought up some very, very uh, uh, like important points in one sense to me because I was working on a, um, you know, a SCON school project a few years back. And uh, um, actually, uh, you, uh, just mentioned that Prabhupada told that we need to give uh, the uh, whatever material foundation also, you know, not only the spiritual uh, foundation, but the material foundation also in the schools so that, uh, you know, when they go to universities, uh, you know, they can go outside for university studies and things like that. But um, there were a few discussions which happened on our panel with uh, senior devotees uh, who were against any kind of material education. Uh, they said that it's absolutely not required and just studying Srimad Bhagavatam, you know, and the scriptures would just work fine. You don't need to be exposed to any of those. Um, so I was just wondering, Maharaj, is there a reference where, uh, you know, you, you just quoted from, uh, it might help me. Uh, where yeah, if, yeah, if you, um, I can show you one particular book. I have it here. This is a Srimad Bhagavatam, Canto 1, first volume by Aruda Devi Dasi. Now, the Aruda, she's the, the leader in the world. Mm -hmm. for education in children in Krishna consciousness. And she has two very grown-up boys who are now married who are professors in universities. 
who are very Krishna conscious and very uh, well situated in the world also. Um, part of the uh, part of the curriculum she mentions is that in the educational system they require some, some basic some basic uh, principles like math and a little bit of science to get accreditations for the children in the secular world so they can go on to universities if they choose but these senior devotees what they're saying is that they're also correct is that if you just want to take just bring the kids to krishna consciousness then that's all you need really <laughs> but it depends on the direction you want to move um yeah the education in krishna consciousness is complete you can also but uh if uh depends on the vision but if you live in a community then that's all you need if you live outside in the more of a what we say nuclear family and you want to educate the kids there you might require to uh, include a few uh, lay subjects such as mathematics and one or two other things that are required for the society so it's a it's a matter of choice but the the, the main thing is that keep krishna consciousness foremost in the educational perspective that's the most important thing because once you one one when one is krishna conscious they know they know everything there's nothing else is needed thank you maharaj i i guess it was finding that balance between you know um, how much of material and how much of spiritual was a big point of contention at least in our meetings and uh, well, if you're going to send kids to secular schools, you can always struggle with balance because they'll be always be imbalanced. If you homeschool children or if we develop the gurukuls like Srila Prabhupada wanted them for the kids, then, then you can make your own curriculums and you have the devotees associating with each other like that. And you don't have to bother. But if you're going to send your kids to secular schools, then then it's a big burden to somehow keep that balance because they require very, very strong foundation in the, within the family and within their own practice of Krishna consciousness in order to eventually, you know, grow up as devotees. <laughs> considerations you have to explore where where you want to put your time and energy mm -hmm. thanks Maharaj thank you so much Hare Krishna thank you we have Sukha mm -hmm. um, that was me Maharaj thank you oh that was okay that was you okay thank you Hare Krishna Hare Krishna Maharaj please accept my humble obeisances on those to Srila Prabhupada Guru Maharaj. Thank you for so wonderfully bringing this point again and again, how our living should be simple, Maharaj. Uh, can I add a few points on the part of that? Mataji was discussing what I have heard, Maharaj. And you can yeah. clarify. Can, yeah. you, so, can you tell me who's talking? This is Anuradha Devi Dasi Maharaj. Oh, okay. Good. Thank you. Yeah. yeah. So, uh, like, I was homeschooling my child for almost three years. He's, uh, I have only one child and I have gone through like uh, Arudha Mata, Arudha Mataji's, uh, you know, the syllabus and things and few of her interview. I've spoken to her and she was mainly doing only Srimad Bhagavatam and uh, maths. That's all her science, her uh, geography, social study, everything came, came from uh, Srimad Bhagavatam. And um, even I have heard uh, from lectures that Srila Prabhupada said that only Sanskrit and math if these two are taught to the little kids, rest should be fine. I mean, what pro, what I understood from my understanding is like, you know, only Sanskrit and math is fine for the kids. And uh, so I also feel, Maharaj, it is up to the, you know. So I was I was teaching all the other subject. And right now, and after a while, almost like three years, my son said he needs friends. He wants to come to a Gurukul. So we happened to move to Dallas. 
you know, to Kalachanji and here we, he goes to TKG Academy, you know. And there also they teach a lot other subjects than uh, the spiritual ones. They do teach Bhagavad Gita and, you know, there is an arrangement for Bhakti Shastri for kids three, third standard and up. They don't have to do 16 rounds, but yeah, to a fourth standard and up. Uh, so they can do Bhakti Shastri. So that's wonderful. They teach nectar of instruction and things like that. But I feel, Maharaj, you know, the other subjects, it's like the fear that when the child grows up and they say, why did you not teach me these subjects? Those subjects may, may not be needed because Srimad Bhagavatam has everything. But it is for their insecurity or the parents' insecurity that, you know, I'm talking for myself that we tend to teach those subjects so that in future they don't feel that, you know, because of Krishna consciousness, I didn't get to study all the other subjects. So that's more on our side than being on Krishna's side. That's what my understanding, you know, going on the both side of the spectrum on homeschooling and Gurukul. So that's, I just wanted to add that. Man. Yeah. And of course, they can always take it up at any time. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Maharaj. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna. Thank you. Okay, do we have any more questions? Any last minute questions for Maharaj? You can unmute yourselves or you can raise hand, whatever you prefer, devotees. Okay. Hey. Looks like we have concluded. Hey, Krishna Maharaj, uh, please accept my humble obeisances. Thank you so much for such a wonderful class, actually. It is quite overwhelming to think about it. Uh, how to make a, this is a great leap for uh, us who are generally uh, in in this world, leading the regular kind of a life to move to a community and to change our entire perspective because uh, we live with certain comforts and we need certain number of cars to move around and, uh, you know, to change all of that is, a, it's a, yeah, it is a, um, it's, a, it's a milestone that we need to reach. Uh, so Maharaj, please, please. Can it doesn't have to be so primitive. It, it can be a modern community, but community is the foundation. Yes, Maharaj, yes. Just like I know one place where there's an apartment complex and all the devotees tend to get apartments all together. So they're all together. And then they... So on weekends, usually, or sometime even during the week, they have Mongol Arti and all the, you know, the family members, they go for Mongol Arti, then they go to work after that. <laughs> they all have Mongol Arti together. Right then. So we can also have a more modern style community. It doesn't have to be you know, rural. It can, rural is ideal, but modern style is also, can be adaptable. The only concern is Srila Prabhupada's instructions, which are quite uh, uh, continuous, that the present day civilization is not going to last. He's, he's warned us over and over that it will, the economic situations will crumble. And uh, so do we want to wait until everything falls apart? <laughs> or do we think it'll go on forever and it won't fall apart? <laughs> It's already, it's already falling apart. The governments around the world, they're all broke and they're sapping the citizens for as much money as they can get. This tax, that tax, more percentage of your income goes to various government agencies and you know, services like that. People are working now for the government pretty much. <laughs> So, uh, yeah, it's in, if you look at it from the economic world situation, you'll see there's, there is somewhat of a crisis out there. And then because it's going in the same direction, we can expect it to, to continue to get worse. So, uh, yeah, food shortages, inflation, unemployment, uh, you know, social problems, 
It's getting, because the, the society is based on sense gratification. And anything that's based on sense gratification will destroy itself in due course of time. We have the example of Rome, Carthage, many of the powerful empires in the world, very powerful, but they all crumbled because there wasn't God consciousness as the goal. Unless the society is focused on God consciousness, it will implode and will destroy itself in due course of time. Because it's not natural. God consciousness is the is the is the essence of, of the human being's existence. Not secular development and ideal material arrangements to have more and more comforts and more and more uh, forms of entertainment. This is all and this is all based on the direction of hell. It's the, it's the program of Satan. That's all it is. <laughs> That's to put it in a very clear way. So how long is it going to last before it will be more wars, more pestilence, more? You know. So you know, we, everybody thinks, everybody wants to think, oh, it'll get better. But it's not going to get better. <laughs> and history has shown us. The problem is history teaches you what not to do. So you can not make the mistake, the same mistakes again. But we don't learn from history. That's the problem. So Prabhupada said, yeah, develop community, build, build these more limp, simple lifestyles and depend on Krishna and center your, around, your life around Krishna consciousness. And that's, I mean, devotees are doing that and they're somewhat protected from the difficulties, but you know, if we have to depend so much on the secular society for food, for water, for gas, for electricity, for transportation, everything, then we are in a situation where, you know, all of that could be destroyed in, in a moment. <laughs> and then what do we do? Well, we can still be Krishna conscious, that's for sure. <laughs> so I'm not a doomsday prophet, but I'm trying to explain that, you know, all you have to do is study the past and study the present and you can see the future. And it's already predicted by Srila Prabhupada many times. Yes. Yeah. These cities won't last. <laughs> so do we want to wait for that or are we going to make a move to, to develop a more natural lifestyle? And community is the basis. You know, how much material amenities we have, that's up to the community. You can still have the modern, modern amenities, but the idea is to do everything uh, within the community, gradually, gradually. Anyway, these are some things to think about. Thank you so much, Maharaj. I had actually, my initial question was, do we have to wait until our kid children grow older or not? But I think you have already answered that very nicely. Thank you so much, Maharaj. Hare Krishna, thank you. Thank you for bringing up the question. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna, dear devotees, if there are any other questions, uh, please go ahead and unmute yourself. Else we can wind up. Thank you so much, Maharaj, for giving us your very, very valuable association, Maharaj. And we look forward to seeing you again. Vancha Kalpatarubhyascha Kripa Sindhu Thank you. 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 Thank you.
Maharaj, for your wonderful association. Thank you for giving it. the devotees the class the other day. I think everybody benefited from your class. <laughs> your mercy, Maharaj. I mean, uh, it's like uh, Chaitanya Mahaprabhu is making Ramananda Rai speak. Your, your blessings is something is coming out, not anything from my realization, from what you have given us. Maharaj. Thank you so much. Thank you for being a nice parrot. Sukadev <laughs> 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 Suka, Suka Goswami means parrot. <laughs> Thank you, Komadaki, Hendra, who else we have there? Bhargavi, Hare Krishna. Bangalore, Hare Krishna, all the way from Bangalore. Wow. Thank you very much, Guru Maharaj. <laughs> Thank you, good morning. Sanjana, Padma, Mega, devotees here. I think the number is up to 48. Thank Krishna. Thank you. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna. Thank you so much. Thank you. Anita. Anita. Hare Krishna Maharaj. Hare Krishna Thank you for a very nice class, Guru Maharaj. Thank you. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna and uh, Sri Krishna Chaitanya. Hare Krishna Guru Maharaj. Thank you. Nice. Okay, I need to depart because I have a meeting with some of the gurus in today's secular society. <laughs> so I have to go. <laughs> But thank you very much. <laughs> My obeisances to everyone. I look forward to our next meeting. Thank you. Thank you so much, Maharaj. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna.